So I said, Jack, you can't climb that beanstalk, but he just kept going for it. Really? Oh, hi. Welcome to This Week in Dining. I'm holding a spoon, and I'm Luke Vijon. I'm not holding a spoon, and I'm Alex Sabine. This week we're going to go over our top five meals served to us by the magnificent staff here at the Kitchen at the Balsams, headed up by Chef Barry. Yes, we also are bringing you our favorite dish in the tavern. Let's get into it. Our favorite appetizer of the week is consumed, like most appetizers of the week, with our fork furthest to our left at our place setting, but this week it's the foie gras terrine. I had the distinct pleasure of trying the foie gras terrine, and I gotta say, it was hands down a winner. First bite, I knew. Yeah, and you actually got some literature on how it's made. I did, and I'm gonna try my best to discuss how it is made. Let's see if I can do it. Okay, so they start with duck liver, which is cured with kosher salt, sal rose, brandy, and some sugar. And then, once it's cured, it takes about five or six hours, they push it into a terrine mold and immerse it in a hot water bath so that it melts into the shape of the mold. Then they make a compote using figs, port wine, apple juice, and shallots. They cook all the ingredients together until they get to know each other, and then they mush it up. Finally, a black truffle honey is added to the terrine, and it's, it's just perfect. Our favorite soup this week is a type of soup we've yet to speak about but is served at every meal. And I don't mean that the specific ingredients are served at every meal, but the Balsams is very, very well known for their chilled soups. And this week we're delving into the world of chilled pineapple soup. Now when I saw this on the menu, I kind of thought it might taste like a fruity drink that you get. Or like a cocktail, like a Caribbean cocktail, but soup. Yeah, well it has rum in it, first of all, although they do offer a non-alcoholic version. And basically the soup part is, you know, it's got yogurt, it, it has rum, it has pineapples, and it's blended with a little nutmeg. It's kind of like a drink. But the key is in the ginger cream, I think. And the ginger cream is all sorts of crazy. They use nitrous oxide after they infuse the cream with ginger. I don't even know how this, this works. Maybe we'll go talk to Chef Barry and get a demonstration at some point. Mm. But the nit nitrous oxide obviously takes the soup up a notch. And then vanilla powder is added, and you get a pineapple chip. It, it's, it's an experience very different from drinking a pineapple drink. I'll and tell you. it's worth noting that they actually pour the soup into a bowl covered around ice right in front of you at the table. So they bring out this ice bowl, and they're like, hmm? It's an interesting experience. Very cool. Try a chilled soup if you come. After such a complex appetizer and soup, it's about time for a salad we're all familiar with, and that's the Caesar salad. But the balsam Caesar salad is amazing every time. Yeah, you know, Caesar salad's one of those things that you order all over the place, and some places just do it terribly wrong. Yeah, and I don't order it all over the place because I'm so scared of overdressing. Yeah, yeah. that's one of the problems. It's like winter? Mm, overdressing weird, outside. Weird Kind yeah, of. bad joke. When you go cross country skiing. Anyway, classic anyway. classic Caesar salad dressing, just olive oil, lemon juice, parmesan, eggs. Anchovies? No anchovies, really? but they will put anchovies, garnish it with anchovies upon request. Really good portion, really great salad, really good job. Really happy Luke. <laughs> really excited to eat it again soon. Maybe tonight. For our favorite entree this week, we're going the pasta route. With a tricky named pasta, we're not sure exactly how it's pronounced. Orecchietta? Orecchiet? Orecchiet. 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 <laughs> do you know what it means? Yes, I do. It was my nickname in high school, actually. Little Ear. <laughs> Apparently, it's the perfect kind of pasta to hold a little amount of sauce. And it's the perfect amount of pasta to hold a little place in my heart for being the best pasta I've ever had. Yeah, this pasta is a good one. You know when you order a pasta and it's way too rich and you want to eat the whole thing, and maybe you do, but then you regret it? Well, this pasta isn't like that. No, but you think it would be. And we don't say this negatively. Like, I love rich food, yeah. but I can eat that whole thing, all the mm. pumpkin, all the house-made bacon, mm. all the seed thing. <laughs> pumpkin seeds. Nice. Uh, it's just an amazing pasta. I love it. Yeah, it's really delicious. I think the kicker for me is the balsamic they add in it. It's really tangy. And the sauce is just a simple brown butter and, and white wine sauce. And steak is on the menu that same night. A really good steak, mm -hmm. but I order the pasta over Almost it. Almost every time. It's it's so good. You it's don't understand it. It's a pasta. It's one that I'm definitely going to try to recreate at home. And fail at. We should also mention that the pasta is made in-house. Sure is. 
Unfortunately, our favorite dessert of this week came to us burnt. I think it's supposed to come to you burnt. Correct, because the literal <laughs> translation of creme brulee is burnt cream, and Balsam's creme brulee is our dessert of the week. Who doesn't love creme brulee? I mean, come on, even you like it, and you are a picky eater. Yeah, it's especially here, it comes in a really wide ramekin, and they, they put a lot of raw sugar on top, mm. and just having that extra bit of sugar, my inner child uh, and outer child just love it. The top of the creme brulee here is unique. It's, it's almost bumpier, if that's a, the right way to say it. Yeah, I, I've heard chefs say that. <laughs> but I think it's this raw sugar that they use. And it's also worth noting that it's served with a heck of a lot of fresh berries and a little coconut macaroon. Also I love made that little home. coconut macaroon. Yeah, I'm going to name my child coconut macaroon <laughs> after that. Creme brulee cannot go wrong, especially here at the Balsams. And now we're going to teleport ourselves to the tavern to talk about the chili. Three, two, one. Whoa! Actually, I'm going to go down by the fire and make a bowl of chili appear in my hands. We've seen the chili being made in the kitchen, and it just speaks for itself. Take a look at these ingredients, and tell me you wouldn't want to eat this chili. That was great. Let's get back to the dining room. Whoa, we're back. Thank you so much for watching This Week in Dining with Alex and Luke. I'm holding a spoon and I'm Luke Pigeon. I'm holding a fork and I'm Alex and mine. And come on down to the Balsams and eat dinner with us sometime soon. Or keep eating dinner with us online like this. <laughs> but I can guarantee that the food tastes better in your tummy than in our tummies. For you, not for us. I'm gonna wrap this up. Alex and Luke.